Hello ornament girls and guys. We've got a brand new ornament designed for you to make. Look how cute this is. It's a little baby buggy. And you know what? If you make these ornaments to sell, I think that you have just met your new bestseller. This would be an absolutely amazing gift for a brand new baby or a gift or favor for a baby shower. You could make them to match the baby's room. Maybe baby's also getting a quilt. You could do an ornament to match and you could even personalize this. You could embroider the baby's name or a date on this bottom piece of fabric. You could even cut something out on your Cricut if you have one of those. You guys, I hope you're as excited about making this as I am. Let's talk about what you'll need to make it. And P.S. We have made you a printable supply list. You can find the download for this right below. And if you're looking at it on your computer, many of these links here are clickable and they will take you to places where you can find this stuff. I'll just strategically set this up here in the corner. You'll need a foam disc. Ours is about three and a quarter inches. You'll need about 175 to 200 straight pins. Yep, it's a lot. This one uses a lot of pins. You'll need about nine or 10 inches of lace trim. Mine's about a half an inch wide. You don't have to be exact about that. You'll need three different fabrics. One of them preferably to be a tonal white color because we want it to represent this open space here on one side of the baby buggy. All of the fabric cuts that you need are listed on the principal supply sheet and you'll need three swirly ornament hangers. Now we do sell these in the Ornament Girls shop. We've got silver, we've got gold, we even have them in red and green, but I can't believe I'm about to say this. You may wanna get some ornament hangers that are less nice <laughs> than ours. Ours are really pretty, but they are very sturdy, and that is actually a bad thing for this because you have to cut them. And unless you've got some Mac Daddy wire cutters, which I don't have, I just had regular old jewelry wire cutters. These guys are super hard to cut. So like wimpy and cheapy, <laughs> that's gonna work really well. And last but not least, you will need some embellishments. This is where you can get creative. I've got some little iridescent white flower sequins, a couple of bead caps, a few clear crystal beads, about eight to 10 inches of super narrow ribbon. This is just gonna be for little bow ties at either side of my baby buggy and about eight to 10 inches of string for the hanger. Feel free to get creative with your embellishments. Honestly, the possibilities are endless. I did a flat back embellishment in the center of this one. I was trying to kind of bling this one out a little bit. Some crystal beads going across the front, use a bead cap and crystal bead at the top and on the side. And on this one, I use gold swirly ornament hangers instead of silver. On this one, I added in some little white star beads to match the star fabric and then some blue crystal beads to match as well. I also did my bow tie in the center instead of on the sides. And this one's pretty simple. Just did a couple of pearls in the center. Tools that you'll need, scissors, wire cutters, tape measure, pen, pencil, or something to score lines on your disc. We'll talk about that in a second. I'll be using my tucking tool. And you'll need a large pearl pin or a corsage pin. This is not gonna go on the actual ornament. This is just gonna be used as a tool. And you'll need this disc dividing strip. This is another printable that we've got for you. You'll find the link right below. It's gonna make prepping your disc super quick and simple. You know what, you guys? I almost forgot. We're not done with the freebie printables. We love our printables around here. <laughs> we made you a planner and coloring sheet where you can fill in what your fabric colors are gonna be and sort of plan out how you wanna arrange things. Just like the other printables, the link is below. All right, let's make this. So let's start by getting the foam ready. We're gonna divide this into quarters. So cut out one of your strips and we're gonna pin this around the edge of the disc right there on the mold line. Just use two or three pins to pin it down around that mold line. You don't have to push the pins in all the way because this is temporary. We're gonna be removing it in just a second. Like that. We're gonna be drawing some lines on the disc using these lines that are on the strip itself, but we don't need all of them. We only need the marks that are darker than the rest. There's only three of them. One, two, three. In addition, we're gonna make a mark right here at the start and end point of the strip itself. So right there at the start and end point, just make a little line above and below your strip just to mark that spot. And then just turn the disc and do the same at all of the dark lines on the strip. When you're done, you'll have four sets of dashes that you've drawn. And then just remove your strip and you're done with it. So we're gonna connect opposing lines that we drew in order to divide this into quarters. But if the fabric that you're gonna be using along the bottom of your buggy is really light in color, you're not gonna wanna use a pen or a pencil to do this next part. Cause otherwise you'll just see it right through the fabric. And of course we don't want that. 
So instead you'll want to score the lines and I'm gonna be using a tucking tool for this, but you could use a butter knife, you could even use your fingernail. But if your bottom fabric is darker, you'll be fine using a pen or a pencil. So line up your tape measure along one of those sets of dashes that you made right there at the edge. Pull it straight across the face of your disc to the opposite set of dash marks. And we're gonna pin it in both of those places. Let me flip this around because I'm a lefty. And you're just gonna take your pen, pencil, or whatever it is you're using to score, if that's what you're doing, and just draw a line right alongside of your tape measure. And I kind of anchored that with my opposite thumb so it doesn't wiggle around. Go ahead and remove your pins and your tape measure and you'll have a line going straight across the disc. I realize that this is actually pretty hard to see in the video, so I'm gonna go ahead and just draw my line with a pen so that you guys will be able to see it. Okay, so you'll have a line like this and then you're gonna do the same exact thing opposite. Now you've got four quarters. I'm gonna flip this over and do the exact same thing on the opposite side. And that is it for prepping the foam. We're gonna start with the quadrant that's gonna be our white space. And for this, I'm using a tonal white fabric. You're gonna hold it with the pattern side facing away and then fold it in half shorter sides together. Now this is kind of just a big giant rectangle. You want the two shorter sides together and then just lightly crease your fold. Now you could totally get away with just using half this size, like cutting this and putting it on the space that we're about to cover. But because it's really white, it's really easy to see through to the foam. Even when you didn't use pen, it can be like, you can see almost like every little bump and all that sort of stuff. So we just like it better doubling it up like this. Now hold it so that your fold is to the left and we're gonna take a pin and just pin down here in the lower left corner. You do not have to be exact about where you pin. We're just aiming for somewhere in the neighborhood of like a quarter inch from each edge. And you're gonna take this and pin it right into the center of one side of your disc, right where those lines are crisscrossing. Now this pin for the rest of this side of the baby buggy is gonna mark our center point because at this point you can see that we've kind of covered exactly where that center point is but we always want to know where it is so right there that pin is our center marker pin you can even pull it out a tad if you want to to help you remember that this is the pin that's the center marker pin because we're going to be putting a few more pins here in place in a second so we're just going to now stretch this piece of fabric up and over this quadrant of the disc and we're going to pin it along the edge to hold it there are a couple things that we want to keep in mind here any pins that are up here along this edge along the edge of the disc we want to keep on the mold line not past it because we're going to be doing the same thing on the other side and we need to leave space over there Anything that's over here or down here, we actually want to pin outside of these lines. And that's because the next couple of pieces of fabric will hide those pins. And don't worry, I'll show you what I'm talking about. We'll start by bringing this straight up the disc and we'll pin up here to get it held down. You can kind of see, I don't know if you guys can see, you might be able to, my pen line showing through. But I'm going to bring this straight up and pin at the top. Now I do want to pin outside that line and even when you can't see the line underneath you can see this line it's connected so you know the line is going straight up like this but we don't want to pin outside the mold line so now I'm going to just smooth the rest of this over we'll aim for this upper center part of the quadrant and again we want to make sure we're pinning this on the mold line and not past it but we can't really see it here so just turn your foam over and lift up a little bit and look and see where your pin is and I accidentally just yanked it out which was not good but let's put that back and just make sure that your pin is not coming across the mold line and I can see that mine is not it's pretty much right on the mold line and so now let's pin down here in the lower right corner I know that this line is going across right there and I know my mold line is right here and we can also look at the mold line from the side down below and we want to make sure that our pin does not pass into this side, just like before. But this time, we can come below this line. 
So I'm actually a little bit above over here. That's okay. This was actually just the beginning of the pins <laughs> for this piece. There's a whole bunch more. We want to make sure that this is really nice and tacked down. So what I'm going to do now is add pins along all these lines and along the mold line, getting everything really nice and smooth. And I'll start down here by adding another pin down here like that. Let's do the same up along here. Here's my center marker pin. I'm going to leave it sticking out just a little bit so I don't lose it. Now here's why you can do that. Here's the piece that we're working on right now. Our next piece is going to be this one and it's going to come right across all those pins. It's going to be in line with that line on the foam, which means it'll cover this line of pins. That's why it's okay to bring those pins down a bit from the line. Same exact thing applies for this piece. This is going to come right across the line and it's going to cover that line of pins that we just created. So I've got these two lines in place and now I'm going to go ahead and do a line of pins on the mold line and I'm just going to double check with each one to make sure that I'm sticking with the mold line. And honestly, we like to be pretty heavy with the pins here because you may start to get a little bit of buckling happening. The more pins you've got, the flatter and more smooth this piece is going to be. Okay, I'm going to go ahead and trim this. I'm starting with the mold line. I'm not going to trim this part, but I am going to get a little bit of this excess off of here and I'm going to move this pin. It's just a little bit too low. I'm actually going to get my more precise scissors here. All right, there is piece one. So with this ornament, you can either finish this whole side and then flip it over and do side two, or you can do them as mirror images of each other as you go. So that's what I'll do. So since the other side is going to be a mirror image of the first side, we're going to do this opposite. We're folding it the same way, the shorter sides together. If you have a pattern on your fabric, then that's going to be facing out. But instead of having it this way where your folded edge is on the left and you're pinning in the lower uh, bottom left corner. Instead, you're going to flip this over and pin in the bottom right corner with the folded edge on the right. So again, I'm just going to pin down here in the corner. Don't have to be exact about that. This was my side one. It was in the upper right quadrant. So if I flip this over, this is going to now go in the upper left quadrant. And again, my pin here, my first pin is going to be my marker pin for the center where the lines crisscross. I'm just going to leave it sticking out just a little bit. And then I'm going to do the exact same thing that I did on side one. I'm going to pin along the mold line over here and then just below my pen lines at the right and at the bottom. And you can actually see your mold line a lot easier this time around because you've got a ridge where your pins are from the first side. So you can just sort of feel that line and it makes it way easier to place your pins. I'll go ahead and trim. I think my scissors need some oil. Alrighty, piece one on both sides is done. So now we're gonna do the very bottom of the baby buggy. So this uh, rectangular piece of fabric, it's almost square, but it's slightly rectangular. You wanna take the short sides and fold them together. And then just lightly finger press the fold. And we're gonna lay this straight across the center on the bottom half of the disc, just below that marker pin that's still sticking up just a little bit. That's marking our center. We want this to sit right up against it, the folded edge, and then the two sides to reach the mold line on either half. And we'll go ahead and pin this in the top center just below that marker pin to hold it in place like this. And now what we want to do is just fold each side, really being careful that we're keeping this really straight across the face. That's an easier thing to do over here because you can still see your line. So actually I'll start over here, keeping that so that it just covers that pen line or your scored line, and then pinning on the side. Again, being really careful that your pin is staying even with the mold line and isn't being pinned into the opposite side of the disc. And now we'll take this side and pin it straight across. If you can see your pen line a little bit, you can look at that. But you kind of know that this pin line that you've created here is just below the line on the phone. So you're really just basically making sure that you just cover all of those pins. And we'll go ahead and pin over here the same in line with our other pins along the mold line. 
So now I'm going to take this and come straight to the bottom, pulling it nice and smooth and pinning it down here on the mold line in the bottom center. The centering part this way doesn't have to be perfect, although you can kind of look at your line from the opposite side. What's really important as usual is making sure that that pin is sitting right there on that mold line and you may have to look up underneath there to make sure. So now we've got this started. So now the fun part, we're gonna try to smooth this down and pin it all the way around. Sometimes this can end up taking a whole lot of pins. In fact, it you may have wall-to-wall -wall pins here, <laughs> whatever it takes to get things smooth. I kind of like to just start now, since I've done the two sides and the bottom, I like to come over to each corner and smooth it out on both sides. Just double checking to make sure I'm on the mold line. Okay, so we've got this, but you can see what's starting to happen. We're starting to get a little bit of rippling happening. That's what's gonna happen. That's what makes it a little bit tedious. Now just basically keep smoothing and keep pinning until you've pushed as much of that rippling out as possible. Pin has no point. See how here I've managed to really push out most of the ripples, but even in between of these pins, you can still see a tiny bit of rippling. That's actually okay. If the ripples are right there at the pin line, it's no biggie because you can see we're gonna be putting a band around. And so anything right there at that mold line is going to be hidden. The goal here though, is to just get those ripples as smooth out as possible and as close to the pin line as possible. Yeah, this is a whole lot of pins. Like I was saying, it can be wall to wall sometimes. That's what's happening to me here. But the more you have this pin down, the easier putting that band on is gonna be in a little bit. Okay, I think I'm pretty much good to go here. Maybe a couple more. So I'm gonna just double check that my pins are on my mold line, after you get kind of a base going, it's you don't have to look up underneath each time because you can see your, where your line is just from the pin. But it's a good idea to double check before you go and start snipping stuff away. Now we'll go ahead and trim everything below the pins. My foam disc actually has like a line right there too, <laughs> which is not the mold line and it keeps throwing me off. Okay, so we're gonna actually just take this now and repeat it on the opposite side. Oh, and by the way, I see something that happened here that I did wrong, so you can learn from my mistake here. Before I started pinning the bottom, I should have put a couple of pins along the top. These pins may or may not need to be removed later, but you can see what will happen when you start really pulling and tugging, it can start to pull your top line out of alignment. Now it's not straight anymore. Um, we are going to be putting a piece of lace trim right across there, so it's probably not going to be that big of a deal. And I'm probably going to end up even having to remove these pins, even if I had put them on before. I'd probably still have to end up removing them later because sometimes they can show through and see how it depends on what you're going to be putting across here. If you're putting something solid, then it'll hide any pins that are there, but it may be something like this where it's a little bit transparent and you'll be able to see pins. Either way, I really don't want that pin from the white fabric to be showing, and so I should have tacked those up first. Let me see if I can do a little bit of finagling here. Probably not, because I really pulled that tight. That might help a little, although I may have to remove that anyway. Now on this other side, we do have that one last flutter fold piece of fabric going across there. And I can definitely make sure that I place that here so that it's covering that pen line and the top edge of this green fabric. But on this side, I'm gonna show you how to do it the right way, <laughs> like I should have done the first time. So I'm gonna take my second rectangle of fabric and fold it the same way. Lay this right across my marker pin, my center marker pin got pushed in a little bit. So laying this so that it sits directly below that marker pin, the folded edge sits below it. Just making sure it reaches to the sides before I pin here in the middle to hold it. Oh, I grabbed that same pin with no point. That's my center. I'll go ahead and do my sides. And this time before I start my bottom here, I'm gonna go ahead and give this 
maybe one or two pins on either side here to keep this line straight. There we go. And now I'm gonna tack down the rest of this just like I did over here. All right, let's trim. I'm gonna get my smaller scissors. That is a lot of pins. Those pieces aren't going anywhere. So now we've only got one last piece to go. We've got our squares of our third fabric. And this is, I think, the easiest part of this ornament. And we're just gonna be doing a flutter fold to fill in this last quadrant. To do that, you're gonna hold your square of fabric with the pattern side facing away from you and on the diagonal. And you're gonna fold two opposing corners together. Just lightly finger press that top crease and then fold it in half the other direction right along that top fold and lightly finger press that crease. And we'll unfold that last fold and then just take a pin and pin right through that fold right near the top folded edge. So you'll have this and we're gonna pin this right there at that center marker pin. That's not it, that's the one. <laughs> we're gonna pin right there at that center marker pin. But placement sort of matters here because we wanna make sure that we're gonna cover all these pins going up the top center. And we do wanna try to cover the top edge and if possible, these pins as well. And so if you're looking at this straight on, you wanna pin this directly below that center marker pin. And I'm gonna just go ahead and push that pin straight down so it's not in the way anymore. And then push this piece straight in. Now I wanna turn this so that that top folded edge is now faced up and down like this. And all the raw edges and the bottom point is faced to the left in the direction of that one last open space of foam. So I'm gonna take this part now, this top piece, and bring it straight up, making sure I'm covering any pins along the way pulling it pretty snug and I'm gonna pin up here at the top in line with my mold line like this so now this thing is straight up and down and my folded edge is facing towards my white fabric so over here you'll see that you've got two layers of fabric you want to take just the top layer and just this bottom point and kind of pinch it with your fingers just the top layer and bring it up towards the point that you just pinned but not all the way you don't want to cover it you wanna bring it about a half of an inch from that first folded edge. Smooth down any fabric that it's covering and lay it so now you have a folded edge kind of going off on an angle. And I'm gonna go ahead and take a pin and pin that along the mold line as well. So we still got layers over here. I'm gonna take my new point that I've just created, just the top layer, and do the same. Pinching it and bringing it right up but not overlapping anything, bringing it down about half an inch or so from my last pin. This is the flutter fold, guys. We use this in several of our patterns. Pinning this one at the mold line as usual. And now we got one last chunk of fabric over here. It's kind of a little bit of a mess now and there's no real points anymore on the top. We're just gonna take this whole thing and fold it over on itself. When we do this fold, we kind of want to take a look and make sure we're folding it up sort of so it looks like the rest of these, but we want to make sure that the bottom edge here is coming straight across as straight as possible across the center. So it looks like a flat piece. Now, if for some reason when you go to do this fold, and I'm having to turn it so that I can actually manipulate the fabric here, but if you go to do this fold and you can't get a straight line across here, maybe it won't reach, um, then you may have to adjust these flutter folds up here to either space them further apart or closer together to make it so that this works out like you want it to work out with a straight line going across. And a little bit too far over onto the opposite side. So just check your pins. And what I like to do here now before I trim this excess fabric is give it a little bit of extra pins along this line, just like we've done for all the other pieces because it's really gonna help when we go to put those band pieces on in just a couple of minutes. All right, so you should have something that looks kind of like this. I'm gonna go ahead and trim off that excess. Looking cute, right? We're gonna do the exact same thing on the opposite side. Remember we're folding this in half on the diagonal with the pattern side facing out, then in half again to find the center. 
hitting right there at the center, just a hair below that top folded edge. So we're going in the opposite direction this time. So I'm gonna be pinning this, again, just below my center marker pin, about there. Here's my center marker pin. I'm gonna go ahead and push it down. Actually, in this case, I think I'm gonna remove it because I feel like it's gonna be in my way. But this time we're gonna turn this the other way so that it's to the right of the white fabric. The folded edge is always gonna be facing towards the white fabric bringing this top point straight up and lining it with the matching fabric on the opposite side. Pinning it in place and then separating these two layers over here and just pinching the top layer only and doing that flutter fold exactly like we just did. So guys, remember this is that side that I messed up because I didn't pin the top of this bottom piece before I pinned the bottom and I stretched it out of proportion. I am thinking what I'm going to need to do here is lower this down just a bit and it might look a little weird on this side compared to my other side, but otherwise I'm not gonna be able to cover my foam over here very well. So I'm just gonna lower this down a little bit. I'm still trying to keep it in the center, but I'm just bringing it down a little bit. We'll see if that helps. This video has just been in like a comedy of errors, it seems like. Right, I think this is gonna be a little better. It's a little awkward because my point is not in line with the green over here, but I'm just gonna have to make sure I really hide that well with whatever I decorate with in the center. That's what embellishments are for, right? Looks like that one's gonna have to get removed. Hopefully everything stays in place. This is definitely my better side, but it's not bad. So now we're gonna cover all of these edges with our three little bands. So in order to make this look seamless, our designer Sherry, who created this ornament by the way, decided to use three separate mini bands instead of one solid band all the way around to match each section, which is a great idea. So we'll start with the white, and you're gonna hold this with a pattern side facing away, and we're gonna fold it into thirds lengthwise. I'm gonna take one side of this and fold it almost in half, and then I'm gonna take the other side and fold it almost in half again. So what you have is one raw edge running down this side of things, but when you flip it over, we've got no raw edges showing. So go ahead and flip it over, and we'll start here at the top between the white fabric and our flutter fold, and lay it flat down over the pins and raw edges of the same fabric. Now if it's too if it's not wide enough, you'll still see pins and raw edges showing from underneath, which means you'll need to make your band a little bit wider by folding it in a little bit less when you fold those two sides in. If it's too wide, and you'll know because you'll go to put it down and it'll look super bulky, then you'll wanna make sure you fold it a little bit more. But once you got it the way that you want it, go ahead and pin right here at this seam between our flutter fold and the white fabric. And then, Pull it nice and snug right along all of those pins and raw edges as snugly as possible. You don't want it to look super poofy when you look at it from the front or the back. You want it to lay there kind of seamlessly. Go ahead and pin when you get to the point where it reaches the next fabric, like this. And now we'll go ahead and lop off this excess. And now let's continue that. We're just gonna take the next piece and of course this strip of this fabric is longer because we've got a little bit of a bigger section to cover. And we're gonna fold it the same way, folding it into thirds, one side in lengthwise, opposite side in. This fabric sheds a lot. We're gonna start right where we left off with the white. So I pinned it right where it started to touch my next fabric and I'll cut off the excess. And we've got just one more to go.
I'm not happy with that side. It's a little bit bulky and you'll probably find that is going to be the case over top of this flutter fold a little bit more than the other pieces because the flutter fold itself is more bulky. So I just kind of smoothed this side separately since this was already pinned and you can do that. You can just kind of smooth each side and pin each side separately until you have it looking like you want it to. Just pushing in all those pins. Now you can see why we used all those pins. If you didn't have all those pins in place, this would be even harder to get smooth. All right, that is it for the bands. And guess what? It's time to make it pretty. So first thing we're gonna do is wrap this trim around the baby buggy. Now where you begin and end this kind of matters depending on how you're gonna embellish. Um, if you're gonna be doing a bow tie on either side, like I've done here, then you can start and end your lace on either end and that bow is gonna hide it. On one of my ornaments, well, I thought I had an ornament where I did a bow only on one side, but apparently not. But if you were gonna do a bow on only one end, then you would want to start and end your lace there so that you can hide it. So think about that before you get started. Now, if you're not doing a bow or anything big, that's okay too. You can see on this one, all I did was some beads. And you know what? It's just not that big of a deal to see where they start and end. Just keep them on the sides and it really doesn't stick out that much. So I'm going to just start on one end and wrap it around. I'm gonna use regular pins for now, but I do plan to add some embellished, beaded, whatever here eventually. And so I'll either remove these pins and replace them with something prettier, or I'll just cover them depending on whatever I put here. I'm gonna wrap it around, give this one pin over here just to hold it where I want it to be for now until I embellish it. I'm even leaving that sticking out a little bit so I can remove it easier later if I need to. And then wrapping it around until I get back to my starting point. And I'll just trim off my excess. And I think my next move here is gonna be to put my beaded sequins right in the center because that's gonna help to hold that lace just a little bit better. So what I wanna do first is pin through the center of one of my sequins. Nope, not that. First, I'm gonna pin a crystal and then a sequin. And we'll just pop that right into the center of each side. That is really satisfying. And while I'm here, I'm gonna be using a couple of more beaded pins for my bows on the side, so I'll just get those ready. And I wanna make these little bows for either side. And we started with like eight to 10 inches of ribbon. You don't need much. I'm gonna go ahead and cut this in half. And just take one of those little pieces and layer one end over the other, leaving as much tail as you're gonna want on your bow. And then, right where they crisscross, take one of your beaded pins and pin right through. Then, you can go ahead and just carry that all the way through to the center of that loop. Push it all the way up against the beaded pin, and now you have a little bow. You can adjust this to make it smaller or bigger as you decide. This is actually a little big, but that's all right. I'm going to put this right in place of that pin that I left sticking out. Let's take it out. And this is going to help to hold that little piece of lace in place. I'll repeat that one more time. I made that one a little smaller. I'm going to go back and change that one later. Cute. I have to change it now. It's bothering me. There we go. I always say I'm a recovering perfectionist, but I'm definitely still recovering. <laughs> Let's go ahead and do the hanger. I've got my string here. I'm gonna tie a knot in the ends, tying it together and forming a loop. Let's pull that nice and tight. And I've got one crystal bead that's a little bigger than the other ones that I had. So I'm gonna pin that onto a pin and now pin this right through that knot I just made. Maybe. There we go. And I have a couple of bead caps. I'm gonna pin that on next. So I've got this. And this is gonna go right up on top of my ornament here. Now I can still see a couple of pins. That actually does not bother me, but if it bothers you at this point, you could either make sure that you use a big enough bead cap that'll cover those. Um, and if not, if you got these pins showing and it's bothering you, you may be able to remove a couple of them at this point because you're helping to hold things down with your hanger and bead cap. But I'm okay with it. That looks cute. So guess what we've got next? We've got those swirly ornament hangers. 
So here's what you're starting with. For two of these, you wanna cut off the least swirly side, okay? So that little S hook kind of part, you wanna cut that off about here on two of them so that you have this. Okay, two of them where you've got the big swirl. Then you're gonna cut the third one the opposite way. You're gonna keep the least swirly side and cut off that extra swirly part. This is gonna be your handle and these are gonna be your wheels. This will be made a lot easier if you've got some good wire cutters. I had enough of these wheels fly across the room that somebody here in the shop is gonna find them and be able to put together a whole other baby carriage ornament <laughs> with all the pieces. Let's start with those wheels. So take a look at your ornament. Here's your center. Just eyeball straight down to the bottom center and stick a pin just kind of sticking out. You can look at it from the front and make sure it looks like it's straight. You don't have to be perfect about this. But we're gonna make a little hole to the left and right of this center pin at about a half an inch away on either side. So I'm gonna just take my tape measure here and measure I don't know, half an inch to five eighths inch away. Whatever you do here, you're gonna wanna do the same on the other side. We'll do five eighths right here. Okay, I'm sticking my big pearl pin in that I told you we're gonna use as a tool. Stick that into that point and then just sort of swivel it around. We're basically trying to make a hole that we can stick one of these little swirly ornament hangers into. This is not a science, guys. You might have to prick a couple of holes in here. It's gonna depend on the fabric you're using, um, how tightly woven it is, but just basically try to work yourself a little hole that you can stick that thing into. And I can almost promise you that the first time you try to stick one in, it's probably not gonna go. <laughs> it's a thing. All right, I'm gonna go ahead and give it a shot here. Oh, wow, right after I said that. That was the best one I've ever had, believe me. So here at this point, if you haven't reamed out too much of a hole in the foam, like up here, this really will stay. But if you've really made a big hole inside there, it may seem like it will come out really easily. And at that point, you could stick some glue at the point, just kind of smooth it on the end there, and then push this in, keep it where you want it to be, and it will help to hold it. But this is what we're going for. There's one side. Let's do the exact same thing over here. I think I made this one about five eighths of an inch away, so I'm gonna do the same right here. Except centered. Here we go. That actually was pretty good. So there's those two. We'll go ahead and remove this now. We don't need it anymore. And we're gonna do a handle. We wanna do a handle over here on the white space. And we're gonna stick this so it's coming out just above where our little embellishment is. I know in real life your handle is not gonna hover in thin air, but we're gonna go with it because it looks cute that way. So same exact thing. We're gonna use our pin here as a hole maker. And I do wanna try to angle this one a little bit because I want my handle to just kind of come up on that slight angle. This white fabric that I'm using, it's um, Muslin Mates by Moda. It's a little bit of a stiffer fabric, so I always have a harder time with this one. Don't think that was a good enough hole, but we're gonna give it a shot anyway. This one's harder to hold on to. All right, finally. It's a good thing there's no actual baby in this baby stroller, because this thing is, look at those wheels, it's gonna go off the rails. One more really cute thing you can do with this handle after you get it in place, is stick a bead cap onto the hook and push it down against the fabric and a bead too. We'll stick a bead on there. A little bit of glue will help this stay. You could put a little bit of glue between the bead cap and the fabric and then push it down in there and then put a little bit of glue between the bead and the bead cap so that those will stay in place. Another idea here is you can do a bead right up here against the fabric on the swirly ornament hanger. You will have to, because these are extra swirly, you will have to put the bead on before you poke the swirly ornament hanger up into the foam. And you are gonna have to put some glue against that bead and the fabric so it'll stay. But it is super cute. I am definitely gonna have to add a little bit of glue down here on these wheels to make those stay how I want them and some glue here as well. But guess what guys, we are done. And I know there was a tiny bit of fuss factor with this one, but you gotta admit, 
it is worth it, isn't it? It is so, so cute. If you give this as a gift for someone that is expecting a new baby, they are going to flip. So I hope that you love making this. And as always, if you have any questions, please be sure to put them in the comments below and we will help you out the best that we can. Thank you so much for watching and happy ornamenting.